Hello again folks, um, sorry it's been a while since my last video, my laptop blew out and unfortunately it took away all the video footage I had that was going to be coming out previously. Um, so this is the first one back now. This one's primarily going to be about the use of neem oil. I've had a, a bit of a problem with caterpillars and all that lot on the cabbage whites, the same as everybody else recently. Um, most of them managed to just keep spraying off with a hose pipe and whatnot. The kale I had left, I got a bit of an infestation on that. So what I did is I actually purposely just left it there, let them really get bad. And I ordered a bottle of neem oil. So N-E-E-M. I mean, I think that's probably going to be showing back the front, unfortunately. Um... The only thing I was told with this was to use cold pressed neem oil and not processed. So it's something to do with some of the stuff that's taken out when they process it by boiling it or something like that anyway. Now, what I've been told to do is you get your sprayer. In our case, this is a one litre spray. I'll do a, a little demo for what it's worth on this just to show how it's mixed up. So little, normal little medicine cup, a bit grubby now because I've been using it for a while. Now, what I do is approximately half of the medicine bottle. And you just want a cheap washing up liquid. This is just from the local sort of corner shop type stuff. You can use all the biodegradable stuff, but this is all I had at the time. Now, fill that up. Now, my understanding is that the detergent helps to thin the oil out so that when you put water in with it, it'll disperse and stay on the spray. So, so let's just tip that into there. Now, I went out, I did a, the first spray two days ago. Um... It didn't seem to have made much difference when I actually went to check. But I think I might have been expecting it to work too quick. So I gave it another spray with the same dose as these yesterday. Um, and by the look of it, I mean, I'll show you in a minute the result. It looks to be pretty good. I mean, they've not all dropped on the floor, but most of them are dead on the plant. So anyway, let me just put some water... Just excuse me for a second. Give it a little swill round just to help it disperse. Try not to spray too heavily, otherwise the bubbles will come up too much and then you'll have trouble getting the lid on without losing most of it. There we go, that's that all done. I'll take you down there in a second just to show you the result. Right, it's going to be the best way if I try to spin. Few, I don't know how to. Is it that one? Hey! <laughs> right. Let's take you down the garden. Might as well do a little mini tour while we're at it. Obviously, that's the last of the courgettes. They're on their way out now. We've had a fair few off it, but not as many as I thought, really. That's the last of the dwarf red French beans. I pick them and I'll just mix them in with some other bits and bobs. Uh, all the fruit bushes ready to repot on, some other like lavender and such like over there. Got some uh, blood red grasses, some pampas grasses all to go down by the pond when I do it. Little fig trees doing well. 
The banana tree has been lousy this year, but we've had no decent sunlight. That's the last of the lettuces here, and there's three more down in that pot there. Got, this is why I'm not recording here at the moment. We've got all the chilli plants doing really well, but they're getting so crowded in here because I haven't managed to get the polytunnel finished yet. Cucumbers are dying off at the end. They've got some sort of bugs on them. Uh, then when they are pineapple tomatillos. Very, very unique flavour. But I, I like them. One of my boys does, but the other boy can't stand them. He thinks I'm trying to poison him. That's them ones. That's some elderberry cuttings that I took, and they've managed to fruit. Yeah. That's an agapanthus there, which is just going to seed, so I'm going to try and save a load of them to see if I can grow some new plants next year. These are all a collection of shrubs for around the pond when I build it. That one there is dwarf pomegranate, so we're going to see if we get any fruit off of it this year. Jerusalem artichokes are over there. That's the masua. This is why I had to figure out something for the caterpillars, because unfortunately, this whole plant was all covered in these type of leaves until the caterpillars attacked it. And I hadn't spotted it in time, and they mullered the plant. So I'm hoping it recovers. That's the potatoes there. These ones are the sapa mirrors. And you've got the pink fir apples. I've got to take all the tops off of them, ready to store. Wasn't too impressed with the crop. That was out of one bucket. There's some nice edible ones, but not as many, but I don't think I watered it enough. Obviously we've got the runner beans. So late, late sowing the runner beans. But we're just starting to get some sort of nice edible sized ones on there. But again, another use for the neem oil is to go against the black fly, which I'm not sure if I can get on the stems there. Since I gave them a spray the day before yesterday, that's really reduced. Uh, yeah, as you can see, polytunnel isn't finished yet, but that's all I'm going to do on that because I'm saving that without a footage that's on my phone. Got celery there. Salariac, little mix of dwarf sunflowers and some other flowers that thought they were dwarf but they weren't. But this is what we were here to see. Let me find some of the most. You're still alive. Spray you. Let me come around this side because the main ones were around on this part. Right. As we can see on here. Now, there is the one or two that are still moving, but they don't seem to be eating. And my understanding is that the neem oil makes them think they're full, and they sort of stop eating. But there's the percentage of them that are on the plant are actually already dead. We'll just give it a shake. They literally just drop off, and there's no wiggling. So... It seems to work. Obviously, if you spray it down before it gets this bad, but when you're spraying it, you need to make sure you're coming under the plants as well as on the top of the plants. Give it a good soaking, and that should help to control them. While we're here, these are my little marrows. <laughs> Doing really well, in all honesty. Got two of those. And over here we've got three plants. These are, what are they? Oh, you know what they are. They are delicata squash. Um, let's see if we can look in there. So we've got them in there. Now there's loads of them on these. Now there's only three plants, but as you can see, it's taken over all that part of the bed and all the part of the bed over there where the tomatoes were, we're going to take them out. And it's taken over, there's loads of fruit on it. So it's just a case of waiting and seeing how well it does. Let's see if I can find another viewpoint. Um, yeah, look, see, we've got 
More down in there. More over there. But, yeah, that's it for now. Now, obviously, like I said, with the neem oil, you can use it on most bugs. So, black fly, white fly, on all the other plants. And it seems to have worked. So, we're going to see how it goes. There's my lady wife. Hello and goodbye. <laughs> All right, let's just head back over. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> All right, let's turn this back around again. Right, now I'm hoping to get some more videos up relatively soon. Hello. <laughs> and I'll hopefully speak to you soon. If, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because I've noticed there's hardly anybody thumbs up in, so I don't know whether the videos are any good or not. All right, thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye.